My name is Kevin Rice. I'm an assistant professor of entomology at the University of Missouri and field crop extension specialist. And today I'm just going to be briefly discussing some of the horticulturally important invasive insects in Missouri. So unfortunately, invasive insect species are being unintentionally transported across the globe at an accelerating rate. And often we find that these invasive species, when they establish a novel habitats, uh, they have higher populations and higher damage rates because their natural enemies did not take that hitchhiking ride with them. So they experience what we call enemy free space. They don't have predators and they increase damage in our uh, agricultural commodities. So one of the recent arrivals in Missouri is the brown marmorated stink bug. It's native to Asia and it was first identified in the United States and Pennsylvania in the early 2000s. And we can distinguish this invasive species from our native species of stink bug by this white antennal banning. That's the characteristic identification marks and the abdominal banding along the edge here. Brown marmorated stink bug is an extreme generalist. It feeds on over 100 different host plant species, including fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, and field crops. And it also has a very high dispersal capacity. So it flies and moves around the habitat and feeds on multiple commodities uh, within the growing season. And this species is now established throughout the entire state of Missouri. And we are seeing this uh, rapid increase in populations. And, and in addition to being a agricultural com commodity pest, it's also a nuisance pest because it overwinters in human uh, shelters, including homes. And this year, in 2020, uh, this fall, uh, our extension personnel have received record calls for brown marmorated stink bugs in people's homes. So uh, that's an indicator that the species is on the rise. The population is increasing. This is some of the pictures of the characteristic damage associated with BMSB. Uh, so they have piercing sucking mouth parts, but they also inject enzymes while they feed. So you get this uh, corkiness and stippling in fruits and vegetables. And again, this is a uh, picture from the mid-Atlantic when the initial uh, epicenter of the invasion. And you can see these high populations causing severe economic damage in multiple crop systems. And growers, even sustainable practicing growers, unfortunately, uh, the only option uh, initially was to rely on insecticidal sprays. And uh, this is just one farm spray schedule in 2011 uh, when we had outbreak years and you can see they were spraying for BMSB every single day uh, and that's not ecological or economically uh, viable. Uh, the good news is we've been studying this species for about a decade now and we've got some really good control measures for this one uh, before it got to Missouri. So we have identified the pheromone and uh, chemical synergist and we have produced lures for those that are commercially available. Uh, we also have uh, these novel monitoring systems, so these new traps. This is the old style of stink bug traps that was, uh, they're very expensive, they're cumbersome, and they kind of get in the way of farm management. Uh, and now we've moved and found that these clear sticky traps uh, are specific to BMSB when you hang the lures on them. And you can put those on the outside borders of, trap, uh, of field crops and get an accurate estimation of populations. Uh, we also have uh, determined thresholds for individual cropping systems, and we've done a lot of work on pesticide, uh, pesticide efficacy trials. And all that information is uh, available in this review that we wrote uh, that's online and open access and free to the public. It's also an edge species. So we found that uh, when we did these landscape analysis, looking at where it likes to feed and population uh, densities, uh, I'm not going to go into details too much of the methods. The main take home message from this paper is that damage in agricultural crops was associated with forest edges. So they also overwinter in forest and they also feed on forest plants. Uh, and the take home message here is that when you're scouting for BMSB, you want to start along your field edges and you want to pay particular attention to wood lines. Uh, that's very important for catching. Uh, and, and noticing the, uh, the population and counting them before they get to threshold. Uh, another small bit of good news is we have this uh, new adventive species. Uh, this is called the 
samurai wasp. So we call it an event of species because uh, we didn't release this species of parasitoid wasp in the United States. It's actually made its own way here hitchhiking uh, on its own. And it's established in 15 states uh, currently. And in Asia, the native region of brown marmorated stink bug, samurai wasp attacks and kills 90% of BMSB eggs. So that's a really impressive kill rate. Uh, the University of Missouri, we are working in collaboration with Penn State and Rutgers University right now to see if we can help uh, establish uh, samurai wasp populations in uh, agricultural systems by planting extra floral nectaries and uh, insectary plantings. That's what the uh, adult wasps feed on. So we hope that if we plant these uh, nice habitats along field edges, that will increase uh, the kill of the eggs in the ag system. We'll have more information on that in the next year or so. Uh, moving on to the next species, uh, spotted wing Drosophila, uh, another invasive species uh, unintentionally introduced to the United States in 2008 and rapidly uh, established across the entire North American continent. Uh, the males can be identified by these little tiny black patches on their wings and the females can be identified by this serrated ovipositor. And this ovipositor, this saw-like ovipositor, is the reason why this uh, particular Drosophila species can insert her eggs into ripe fruit. Uh, so our native Drosophila species have a, a flat ovipositor and they cannot do that and they're restricted to fallen fruit. So spotted wing Drosophila attacks mostly small fruit, your raspberries, your blackberries, blueberries, and strawberries. And uh, this picture on the left, this is the goal at harvest time, right? This is what we're trying to get to market. And if you do not control spotted wing Drosophila, uh, you can have 100% yield loss, uh, severe economic losses. So some of the management options that are available now, uh, sanitation is key. So removing and picking up fallen fruit on the ground is going to remove breeding uh, sites. Uh, we also found that increasing your harvest interval uh, rapidly uh, reduces populations levels. So if you're removing ripe fruit and getting it to market uh, at a quicker rate, uh, you're, you're, again, providing less breeding options for them. Uh, exclusion nets do help as well. You have to use very fine netting. All that information is online. And then lastly, we have these things called attractocidal spheres. So these are a new control methods that we designed uh, at the USDA. They're an apple mimic. Uh, the flies are attracted to the red color. We also load this wax cap with sugar and insecticides. So uh, every morning with the, the dew, the insecticides are released. Uh, females come and land on that and they eat the sugar, which is uh, laced with an insecticide and they die very, very rapidly. And here's the field data that shows that uh, these spheres provide equivalent protection as insecticide sprays. So we're hoping that they go to a commercial market in the near future. And then lastly, because it's an invasive species, uh, at some point in the season, you typically do need to apply insecticides to monitor or to, to manage this particular pest. Lastly, a uh, Japanese beetle you're probably familiar with it established in Missouri about a decade ago. Um, it's throughout the state as well, an extreme generalist that feeds on 300 different host plant species. Uh, it has patchy uh, population dynamics and localized and regional weather events uh, often play a role in population levels. Uh, but the, the, the main take home is that it's got a large window of damage, you know, throughout most of the summer the adults are active and they cause severe defoliation, which can reduce photosynthesis and sugar production for fruit and vegetables. We do have a biological control agent that was released by the USDA. This is Tithia bernalis. Uh, this is a wasp that attacks the larva and uh, it reduces populations pretty well. And we do have this species established in Missouri. We're hoping that it builds up and provides some help with the level of Japanese beetles in the future. Uh, at the University of Missouri, uh, we are working on another control option using insecticidal nets. So these are very similar to the nets that they use in Africa to control malaria. They're loaded with a pyrethroid, uh, and, and we have a, if the, we, we load it with also pheromones, and if the adults land on it, they die within three seconds, so rapid mortality. And again, the take home message here is that our nets and field crop provided the same protection as weekly insecticide sprays. Uh, so we hope to have uh, this out commercially as well and uh, to move it into other systems, including uh, high commodity fruit and vegetables. Uh, 
uh, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. There's my email and thanks again.